Hey everyone, in this video we're going to talk about areas in polar coordinates. Okay, so we have polar equations, and so if you kind of look at the darker blue here, that's some portion of a curve that's defined with the polar equation. And so what we want to do is we want to figure out well, what's that area um, kind of encompassed by that curve. And so we have these little triangular shapes that we're going to cut out in our region and if we focus on just one of them we can figure out the area of that little triangle and then add them up to get the area bounded by our curve and so the area of a sector which is one of these little triangles is one half times the radius squared times the change in the angle within that sector so the change in the angle can be represented delta theta and so if we want to add those up, well, we use summation. And so the area of the entire region we are looking for is approximately equal to the sum of all these sectors, of all these little triangles. Now, if we take the limit of this sum, then we can rewrite that using integration, and that would be equal to our area. So here is the area of a fan-shaped region, and this is going to be between the origin and a curve. Soon I'm going to show you between two curves how to find that area, but for now we're going from the origin to a curve, so the blue curve here. And so it's going to be the integral from alpha to beta, where alpha and beta are the angles that your region is between, a starting point and an ending point in angles. And then it's just the sectors being added up, the area of the sectors, and then just notice we changed delta theta to d theta. So this note right here, beta minus alpha is less than 2 pi, that's just a side note to mention that we don't want our angles to overlap. So um, our region is defined within like 0 to 2 pi or something less than that. And then also the radius is considered positive here. And then the area differential is dA and that's just the 1 half times r squared d theta. Okay, and so d theta, you can think of it just like up here, delta theta, like we called it before. So let's take a look at this example. We're going to find the area of the region in the xy plane enclosed by the cardioid r equals 2 times 1 plus cosine theta. Now we talked about graphing polar equations in the past, so what you want to do, and I'll just briefly go through it, is set up a table of values and you plug in for theta, and then you solve for r. And if you can use any symmetry, that would be very helpful to graph more quickly. So I just picked a few theta values. I plugged them into our equation and solve for r. And then this graph is going to be symmetric about the x-axis. So if I plot these few points that I found and then map that over or flip that graph over, this is my graph. So this is a cardioid. And so we want to know, well, what's the area all inside of here, enclosed by that curve? So we're going to use our formula, our integration formula for area, and just fill in what we know. For this shape, okay, so what we can do is we could say that this shape would start at an angle of 0, and then it would sweep out just once to an angle of 2 pi. And you can see that from your values here. 0, 4 would start you here, pi over 2, comma 2, which is right here. And then at pi, you're down here at 0, and then it would just mirror. So at 3 pi over 2, you'd be down here, and then at 2 pi, you'd be back at 4. Okay, so our angle goes from 0 to 2 pi. And then we know what r is, it was given to us, so we just fill that in, and we're going to square it, and then start simplifying, and then it's just integration after this, and then we'll work that out. So if we square that quantity, we get inside 4 plus 8 cosine theta plus 4. 4 cosine squared theta. Let's go ahead and distribute the 1 half now, okay, and then see what we can do as far as solving this integral. Well, anytime you see cosine squared, you want to remember your trig identity to rewrite cosine squared so you can integrate it more easily. So all I changed here was cosine squared theta equals 1 plus cosine 2 theta over 2. So we just replace that, and if we Simplify right there with the twos, they divide out. Okay, and so now let's just keep going from here, and it's just straightforward integration. So, continuing, 
we have the integral of 2 is 2 theta, integral of 4 cosine theta is 4 sine theta, the integral of 1 is theta, and then right over here we did have to use u substitution. That's where this extra 1 half came from if you let u equal 2 theta. And then evaluate this expression from 0 to 2 pi, so plug in 2 pi, plug in 0 and subtract. And just remember what you know from trig, or you can have a unit circle handy. Sine of 2 theta is going to be 0 everywhere you see it. Sine of 0 is also 0. So all those terms here and here as well are all going to be 0. And you simplify and you get 6 pi. So the area, all this, is 6 pi. Now let's expand this idea and take the area between two curves. The other formula was from the origin to a curve. So now if we have two curves, we're going to call them R1 and R2, and we have some region between them, and we also have that region between two angles, alpha and beta, then this is our area formula for that type of region. Very, very similar to our last formula, but this time we have to subtract each radius squared. Okay, so the difference between the squared radii. And in this case, notice down here, our r values are greater than or equal to r1, but less than or equal to r2. This is just saying that r2 is the outside. It's like the outside curve and r1 is the inside curve of your region. And I'll show you a picture. Okay, so taking a look at this example, we are going to find the area of the region that lies inside the circle, r equals 1, and outside of the cardioid, r equals 1 minus cosine theta. So we have our circle, r equals 1. We have our cardioid, r equals 1 minus cosine theta. But let's be specific. Which part of this are we talking about? We want inside of the circle, but outside of the cardioid. So that is this region right in here. Okay, so we are finding the area of just this piece. So one of the main things we have to figure out before we can use our formula for area is what are these angles that this region is between? So what is alpha and what is beta? Well, if we start with just one of them, if I were to have my angle or my ray for an angle on the positive x-axis, and if I start to sweep it out clockwise, I would have to stop at negative pi over 2 or negative 90 degrees because then I would cover this half of my region if I stop right there. So alpha is negative pi over 2. In a similar manner, if I'm at the positive x-axis and I start to sweep my angle counterclockwise, I would have to stop at pi over 2 or 90 because that's where my region would stop. So beta is pi over 2. Now we could actually do this using substitution as well if that's a more intuitive for you. You have two equations and in this case we can just use substitution. They both equal r so set them equal to each other. And Then if we solve for theta because that's what we want, we want the angles, we have 0 equals cosine theta. Well that happens twice and so one of those places is at pi over 2 and then the other one if you think of your unit circle you would probably think um, cosine theta is 0 at 3 pi over 2, but you're going to rewrite that with a negative angle as negative pi over 2 because you want your functions to be continuous up here for r. Okay, so we want to be able to have continuous values. So from negative pi over 2 all the way up to positive pi over 2 would make that continuous. Okay, so we have our angles, and so we have our formula then for area, and we're going to plug in everything that we know. So we have our integral from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, and then 1 half, and then notice what we have, r2 is 1. It's the outside, it's the, like the, the bigger one if you want to think about that. Our re region is enclosed by r equals 1, and then the lower part, or the more inside piece, is our r1, which in this case is 1 minus cosine theta. We're going to square both of those, start simplifying, and then integrate. So we continue and just foil this binomial out and keep simplifying. Okay? And if we distribute the 1 half, we end up with this integrand, cosine theta minus 1 half cosine squared theta. And then remember, just like our last example, we're going to need to use substitution here from our trig identity for cosine squared. And so we have a 1 fourth here, 
from the 1 half times this other 2 on bottom. And then if we integrate, integral of cosine is sine theta. And then if we separate this fraction over here, the 1 over 4, that's where that minus 1 fourth theta came from. And then just this last term, when we evaluated our integral, is um, going to have that extra 1 half because you do need u substitution again. You let u equal 2 theta. So that's where that 1 half comes from in the front. Okay, and then we plug in our limits of integration, and we have some really nice values. We simplify and get 2 minus pi over 4. So that is this area in between our curves here. That's what that area would be. Okay, so that's it for this one.